Okay, sports fans, here's this week's edition of Wobbly Hockey. Now, before we get into the highlights, I just want to make a mission statement, a, a prime directive. Like, I can't speak for everyone, but why hockey? Why do we play hockey? Why do I play hockey? Well, aside from the fact that every other sport sucks, like, you can make a, a credible argument, and I have. You can make a credible argument that hockey is the sport that requires the most athleticism. Like, there are some faster sports. High lie is a faster sport. Well, obviously, motor sports are faster. But nothing requires the overall athleticism and physical prowess that hockey does. It's also a team sport. And here's a fun fact about primates. Take the example of bonobo chimps um, hunting on the island of Madagascar, when they hunt in packs, and when they hunt in packs of 10 or more, their success rate is 100%. We're those types of primates. We operate better in small groups, band of brothers kind of thing. And it has a secondary function when it comes to hockey, where I'm concerned, is it's a, it's a, it's a phys ed instructor, it's a coach, it's a workout partner, only it's 10 workout partners. And you form a, a five-man puck delivery system and you have a very clear, clear goal, right? You know exactly what it is that you're all trying to do. You're all trying to put the puck in the other net and try to keep the puck outside of your net. Very simple. It's one of the reasons why I also like hockey is it slows down my spinning brain to just narrow down the focus to this is what you need to do. That and like it's great exercise. I do strength training. I do you know, dieting, try to lose weight, but it's not, I don't play hockey in order to be stronger. I don't diet in order to lose weight, although those are nice side benefits. I'd like to be able to fit in some of my pants again. I know you might have heard me complain about being 20, 30 pounds overweight. But I don't lose weight. I don't play hockey so that I can lose weight. I lose weight so that I'm better at hockey. With that said, so here we go. I got the puck fired up to Dan, who takes it off his foot. Dan is so good at picking up passes. I can shoot as hard as I want, he's going to get it. So here's Captain Fantastic, or Mr. Fantastic, whoever Stretch Armstrong is. Passes it up, two on one, shot, rebound. Matt picks it up, plays with it, and turns it over. Boom, same guy, gets a shot from the other side, and scores. Now, can I just reverse this for a second? Chalk talk. Here we are coming into the zone. Now... There's Birdo. He's pinched. Uh, created a, an odd man rush, but it's okay. He's coming back. All right, coming back to take this guy. Buddy comes in right about here. That's not a great place to allow him to shoot from, because good shooters will sh score their fair share of goals. Um, but Matt's got a good angle on him, and Birdo's cutting him off, so he shoots. There's really nothing for him to, to shoot at. Um, Matt kicks out the rebound and, and goes right to Matt Nygaard. And now he's got possession of the puck right here. Now, obviously, we can see that he's got to pass straight back to Dan Martin. But that would be a foolish play just on principle because you do not. And here's one of my rules. I should write them down. Shouldn't I write them down? I'll write them down. I'll make a video about it at some point. No, no look backhand passes in your own zone obviously there are caveats everybody's a jazz musician if you think it's the right thing to do and you can really reverse it and it's a very creative play and you think you can get away with it sure go ahead have fun but as a general rule if we're talking about basic strat playing intermediate to advanced amateur hockey you, you don't want to make any no look backhand passes in your own zone i mean you, you just try not to do that so this pass is not an option, but he does have two options, which is to carry the puck into the corner where it's a little bit safer, allowing the rest of us to reset, or to chip it up the boards, which is a little bit tougher of play because we got here, we got the you know slender man coming here. He's all fucking sticks and elbows, and he's going to get in the way, but it's still a safer play to move it out there. 
What is not a safe play is when you're in this area right here, sort of a semicircle, the slot, a good place to shoot from. When you're in that area, it's what I call a no-dangle zone. And for obvious reasons, because you're trying to make a move, little chip, now everybody's in the wrong spot. Now, Marco has, has moved off into the corner because he thought that there would be a battle in the along the boards in the corner. Matt is the one who coughed up the puck. He's off in the corner as well. And this guy is just going to walk out. And from the other side, now with Matt Peacock all the way back into his net, he's got a lot more net to shoot at, and he finds it. Yay! Look how amazing they are. Yeah, it's true. All right, that was a fuck-up, but let's get on to something a little bit better. Badlin in the corner. This is a precursor to something else that happens. Now you've got fucking like Dan and Birdo in the corner roughing people up. I, I do not feel that. It's not a good look for these guys. So we pick it up, no problem. Walk it out. And this starts. Look at the ref. Oh, man, dude. Oh, oh. Now everybody's mad at him. And they should be. And this, this actually draws us a penalty later on in the game. Let's see that again. Look at this. Pass out. Got it. No problem. Like, dude, get out. Oh, my God. He over goes to Slenderman. But nothing happens. We got the puck again. This is a nice little play. I wanted to hide it. One pass. Two pass. Ryan's got it. Makes a good little play. Pushes it down low. And now, other Nick has possession behind their net. This is good. Stop this video and replay it a couple times and see what we did well. That was four passes that got us with puck possession behind our opponent's net. An objectively good play. Here they are, walking in again. Dan, coming back. So good. Did you save it? And pandemonium! Everybody misses. You miss. They miss. You miss. You shoot it to hit the thing. Oh, we get a stop. That's Birdo C starting to the steam is starting. A little bit of oh, a little bit of anger. A little bit of anger. It's it's boiling. Teapot's going. Uh, Dan wins wins the draw right back. Birdo's got it. And then he Birdo gets muscled off the puck. Oh, that can't stand. No, 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 no. Birdo muscles people off the puck. And now he gets hooked and then he gets slashed. Oh, rage is building. Now he's got it. I know everybody went, whoa. Not to be outdone, our gentle giant, Matt Nygaard, spanking the 140 pound angry young men. In the corner, one comes in, gets a little shot, pushes it back, and now, oh, I know, got it, got it stuck up for him, and now it's suddenly, it's pandemonium again. Matt punches one guy, punches the other guy, uses the first guy to punch the second guy. Oh. I love hockey. Well, all that one kick got to. Got the puck, Birdo, coming around, fails to play. Cut this off. Now, hold on. Back up a second. I'm trying to make these, I'm, I'm going to try to make these videos like, you know, consumable, right? I, I don't want to make two hour video essays about things that are happening. But this is 10 minutes of highlights. And I, I know I, this is an aside as well. I'm already, I'm already pushing the uh, boundaries, but I could talk for hours. I really could. In any case, here's the thing. I mean, here's another one of my rules, and I really should write a list. Didn't I say I was going to make a list? Didn't I say I was going to check it twice? No, I'm not Santa Claus. I'm an asshole. All right, so here's me being an asshole criticizing both Birdo and Marco for this. For what is a tactical mistake or risky play? That is, when you have possession of the puck... Choosing to engage then in a one-on-one -on -one with a four-checker. It's like if you're playing basketball and you've got possession. And you're dribbling down the court and you say, hey, hey, ref, stop. I feel like doing a jump ball. Anybody want to do a jump ball with me? No, you don't do that. You, don't, you have possession of the puck. You don't want to throw things into chaos. And, and Birdo 
Nine out of ten times, you're going to get away with this. You're a skilled hockey player. You're really solid on your feet. You can spin off of these guys, especially the smaller guys. You can just push them around. I'm not talking about the nine times that this play works. I'm talking about the rest of the time. Engage in a one-on-one, get stripped of the puck. But here's what made this a little bit more remarkable and made me want to uh, comment on this. Now, Marco, who's just seen this play about trying to reverse along the boards and getting stripped of the puck, he's got the puck. He's coming around. Oh, what the hell are you? One second. Right. See, I need new software. Berto gets stripped of the puck. Marco, he's got it right here. Okay. Again, hindsight is 2020. It It is wonderful to have this technology to be able to look back and see, okay, what could be done? And believe me, as, as critical as I might be of anyone else's play, I am most critical of my own. We're going to see that later on. In any case, Marco's got the puck here. Now, he could just fire it around. He could reverse, right? He could come around a little bit and then drop that puck back to Birdo because he knows Birdo's going to be on the boards. But again, that violates one of the other rules. No, what, what do we say? What do we say? No look backhand passes in her own zone makes coach sad. So you want to fire it on forward, especially like you look a little bit to your left. We've got a player right out here. So if you're firing it hard around the boards, it's going to get to um, our forward drifting in or our forward that is being very responsible coming back into our zone, right? So you've got two options. Um, do you want to guess as to which of the options that Marco chooses? Yeah, let's do a reverse and engage in a one-on-one. -on -one. Oops, oh, oopsie, oh, I lost the ball, oops, and it's in front, oops, oh, it's not to scramble, oops, and now Martin, oh, Alberto has to give somebody what what, right? Now you got to establish credibility. Didn't need to happen. In any case, we're down one nothing. Like, we've basically, possession of the puck most of the time, almost all of the good chances, and we're down one nothing at the start of the second. So here we, here we start. Right? Little, simple pass to a guy who's moving, and now we enter the zone with pace. And once again, we're in their zone with possession. A couple good chances. Failed to get it out here, but again, the point is, here's Nick picking off the uh, the forecheck. Back to Marco, fires it. Again, no bad shots. That was a shot in the tip. I think he might hit the post. He got it again. Pass back, took it on the backhand. I think it's out again here, but nope. Nice little play. Touch. Boom. Yeah, that was nice. Once again, that was another post. But let me back up a little bit. Because I want to show this off. Because this was very nice. Jesse, Dan, this is lovely. Touch, shot. ka -ding! Goalie's favorite sound. All right. Still down one up. I've got the puck. I sky it. Little bounce, hoping for the best, hoping for Sean to just go and get me a point. Kind of does. Tries to pass it in front. Ryan's got it. Now bounce it off the goalie stick and up and in. Look at that again coming in like Ryan was he should get, get player of the game here. look at this isn't the only one off the goalie stick right to him tap easy peasy lemon squeezy 1-1 one, one. sort of halfway through the game working on the boards again little tap back to me a little push to Nick again and here we go and it's, it's like a theme different players Nick comes in gets a little he's coming in with pace right the pass came all the way back here, all the way back here, and which allows him to walk right in. And these guys, you know, they got to do, they got to do the dirty. And now we got a power play. A little bit later in the period, they try to clear it out, pop it up to Brian. Again, poise, gets it back to Sean. Sean's looking around, a little bit of time, sees me back here because I'm doing the signal like, hey, I, I would like the puck because I have an idea. Now I've got it here, and now I know Sean's coming from back here because we made eye contact, 
and we did the the Vulcan mind meld and we knew exactly what we were going to do. And so I shoot it. Not at all looking to score as we discussed in the day. Puck right to him and oh look at that. See see that that goalie? See what he's doing right there? That's the look of a goalie who is a good goalie. This guy was really fucking solid. And he knew perfectly well that when Duke hit technique correct, no can defense. That's what your sensei will tell you in the dojo. No can defense. Two to one for the good guys. See, look at this. Boom, off, pad. Yikes. He even knew. As soon as as soon as it made contact with his pad, he knew it was over. It's like the five finger thing that makes your heart explode. Here's an interesting play. I, I widened it out because I want everybody to have a look and see if the ref made the right play. We've been doing this really, really well in the bounce pass. This was called offside. Is it? Look. Decide with me. Ah! You know, I wish we had better equipment, but I think the ref made the right call. Here we are on a power play. Nick starts off by hitting the post. I pick up the puck in the corner, a little down low. Jesse decides to take a shot on net. Ooh, almost surprises him, right? That's a nice play. Jesse passes it to Nick. Nick shoots, hits the post again. Oh, Jesus Christ. Good power play. Dan tackles it down. Nick makes a nice little play, takes it on his backhand, shoots it again. Everybody's feeding Nick like he's a hungry little bird. It's okay. That's a nice one. Just stop the stop the video right there. Stop the video just to show a nice save. Matt Peacock showing his plumage. Right? Little cough up again. Cough up in the corner. Lean to a guy picking up a loose puck. Walking out here. But this time, Matt's ready. And boom. Big glove save. On Stretch Armstrong. Let's have a quick look at this again. Shot. No. Peacock showing off the plumage, pining for the fjords. All right, we're two to one, and I want to make a another commentary here. Oh my god, I'm 15 minutes in. If you're still with me right now, I love you like a brother. All right, basic one of the principles on the list is if you are taking a face off in your own zone and you're on the defensive side what you are thinking is what do i do on a clean loss when you're on the offensive side you have to think what do am i going to do on a clean win i did not do that because i got the puck dan fucking hero like it was like a pass it wasn't even, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't a draw. It was just like, here, take the puck, Tom. Watch this. How clean this is. My God. Like, every time I watch this, and I've watched this a few times, I, I feel more and more shame at my failure. Because at this point, if I had planned this ahead of time, I would have just tapped the puck right to about there and leveled a clapper right along the ice, right into his, right there, right down like this. Look at this. Dan is going right to the net because he knows it's coming. Jesse is going to the front of the net to cause some havoc. And what do I do? I take an extra second to think about it, right? Why did I take an extra second to think about it? Because I didn't think about it before the fucking draw. Violated my own tactical commandments. And so now... My best bet would have just been a gentle pass over to Marco here, which as note, and Marco's not in this group, but for other people that might be in this position, communication, let me know. Because right now I've got blinders on. I, I wasn't thinking and now I'm scrambling trying to figure out what I want to do. What I'd settled on is firing a fairly strong pass through this seam right there hitting the board so that it bounces back out here and having Nick come across so that we have a low three-on-two situation because I see three of them coming at me like a red rover line. I think this is no problem. I'm just going to fire it through. I didn't fire it through. I fucking hit him right in the fucking scrotum. Like, what is that? Like, 
how how i mean i just told you how i didn't think ahead i didn't plan what am i going to do with it now i almost here it comes back here i'd almost make a hero play knocking it down but dude fucking fixed off and and this is one of the things that i also wanted to say that was a nice skill play he sp spun around but like i mean i made it happen by making a bad decision and in the primer that it at the beginning of this video when I talked about what it is that I one of the reasons why I play hockey is to have that intense stressor that I wouldn't have otherwise like I'm not gonna exercise on my own it's torture I'm not gonna push myself I would much rather smoke a joint and eat a donut but when I fuck up like this so obviously in front of all of my brothers I feel compelled to skate to the point where I'm a little nauseous to get back and I don't know now I get to the game now I skate off far full of so remember when Nick was passing the puck to everybody bulges the twine have a look at that Stop right there. Nice goal. Cuts across. But the comment that I want to make about this is, Nick, dude, man, how many times have we passed the puck to you? Couldn't score. But then you just pick it up by yourself. Unassisted goal. Fucking selfish. So we're three to one at this point. This is the second thing I want to say. That's a nice goal. Here, let me let me say this. We're, we're going we're gonna to watch it one more time while I say. After you score a goal to get to... Uh, a three to one lead in this case you've got a little bit of breathing room you've you know they they might have been pushing the pace but you came back you scored it's a very very big goal the next 30 seconds are crucial you can't let them answer and i say this every time and i always say look you, you can't this is the time that you really you you might want to err on the side of taking a penalty right Usually you want to get up to the line of taking the penalty, but don't quite cross it. In a case like this, the next 30 to 60 seconds after an important goal that you've scored, you might want to take that chance and actually, you know, look, look, if I got to trip this guy, if I got to interfere, I'm going to do it. Take the chance that the ref doesn't see it. You don't want to let them score. It's very, very important not to let them score. So Nick comes in, scores, right? It's about 2.12 on the clock, I want to say, something like that. Twelve seconds later. I know I was talking for twenty minutes and then I, all of a sudden I got quiet. Well, I got quiet on purpose. They didn't get anything afterwards. That was uh Empty net goal that basically did it. We did it. Congratulations. It's a late game this week, so I'm assuming that I might not see all of you. I'll see you when I see you.